he's a real guest, the way he screams at his team, the way he asks them to do it properly, the way he will make sure that everything is perfect. I think that is the manifestation of every chef in the world. <laughs> Hi, my name is Nadi Ramli and I'm 29 this year. I'm currently the head chef and owner of Dante's Italian Fusion Cafe. I studied culinary arts in KDU for about 3 years and graduated with a higher diploma. I've had about 12 years of experience as a chef and today I'm here to look at cooking movie videos and to react to them. What will happen? Let the station slow things down. Who doesn't go, orders pile up, disaster. I'll make this easy to remember. Keep your station clear, or I will kill you! <laughs> oh man, that reminds me of my younger days. Even though that was a cartoon, I would say that is spot on, man. Like any chef would be all about cleanliness. Priority is always number one. Cleanliness is always number one in the kitchen. So I'd say that there's as real as you can get if you do the cartoon. Have I been in a situation like this? Yes, I've been in a situation at least from year 1 until year 12. It's always about cleanliness guys in the kitchen. No matter how fancy or how non-fancy the shop is, it's always about cleanliness. Does this really happen in the kitchen? Yes, it does. It happens all the time, anywhere, everywhere. I feel like if you're a chef and you don't care about cleanliness, you're not really a chef. I'm not bro. I've never seen this before. Now, last night, we served this. miserable overcooked asparagus in this restaurant the cuisine is not an old tired marriage it is a passionate affair of the heart sorry pardon i know i'm late but they were growing by the river i couldn't resist them oh red currants jean pierre the red currants will go with the duck n'est-ce pas yeah okay why not Parfait. merci marguerite de rien Allez, on y retourne les gars on y va well, quite passionate, quite passionate lady. But I would say that it's true what she said. You know, cooking is a passionate affair. You can't just serve shitty food to shitty customers, especially when they pay for the food. Yeah, I, I, I'd say that that's quite real. Everybody gets a scolding like that at least once, once a week or once every two weeks. Yes, I have. We, we do regularly call out each other, especially if we're serving shitty food, because I feel that's the only way for us to take care of each other and to ensure that the team is running at optimum. But yeah, I would say it is necessary to have someone like this on your team to ensure that the best quality is going out to ensure your customers are not getting shitty food. From the asshole on 7 again, he wants to know whether you've ever seen a rare steak before. <laughs> you out of your mind? Yeah, that's why I'm in there. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll get you a new tablecloth. Oh no, please, let me take care of that. Damn. So, probably what I can say is, I don't think that ever going to happen in real life, man. Like this. Lawsuit greetings will happen right there, man. Also, I don't think hygiene-wise, no chef is going to do that and piss off their customers. Have I been in a situation like this? Um, no, I have never. In all my years of working, I have never, I have never been in this situation before. Well, I'll usually approach them personally and talk to them nicely. And usually, if all that doesn't work, then we can probably talk about a refund or we can probably talk about how you can get your cash back. But other than that, I'm not big into arguing. You're a cook, you're a chef. This is what you've been cooking for years and it works. And either you cook the menu that our customers have come to- You want me to cook the same food? The same exact- The same food that he ripped apart? <laughs> mm. So that's uh, quite an emotional clip. Uh, I would say that every chef will go through this point of their life where you start to question yourself. Am I doing it for the quality or am I doing it for the money? It's normal. Every chef goes through this dilemma. So I would say that the emotions that they're trying to perceive from this clip is quite real. It's quite on point. It's really on point. Does this really happen in the kitchen? Yes, it does. 
Yeah. Yes, it does. Because we are all only humans. As humans, we only can take a certain level of stress before we blow. So I feel that this is a normal, normal thing in the kitchen. Every week, one chef will blow, which is quite normal. Yes, I have many times. Every kitchen, every restaurant, there will always be one kind of big drama at least once a month. <laughs> So, uh, about this video, I would say that the techniques are correct and the way he's cutting the salmon is real but I would say maybe the part where he flips the salmon clay over and he doesn't remove the middle bone yeah, I feel like they missed out that part It's a lot harder to remove the fillet of the salmon if you don't remove the middle bone Well, it did look kind of real the sliminess of the salmon how he feels for the bones how he plucks the, the, the small bones from the fillet uh, I would say, I'll say all that is real Except for the part where he flips over the fillet. <laughs> yeah, but with less speed and less drama. Hands down, that was like really good handwork. His cutting skills, his cutting style, the way he lifts the knife up to follow through to the next shop, that's really real though. The way he puts his hand down and the way the cleaver makes that sound, that, that's a real technique. Yeah, so that scene gave me a really therapeutic feel because I like the way he cuts them and the veggies end up symmetrical, straight line, same length really good. Uh, I would prepare it based on how I would want to serve it actually and I would say that there's no standard way of serving it. It's all down to how the chef wants it to be and how he wants to sell it to the customer. Hey, Darren. Darren, yeah. One minute! Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's right. That's a bit thick. That's good. That's good. Thank you, chef. What's all? Push, 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 push. Like velvet, yeah? Like yes, velvet. Yes, chef. How do you? Show me. Yes, chef. Show me. 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 Show you are looking at that all the time, yeah? Yes, you have eyes on it the whole time, so you have to pass. Yes, chef. Yeah, look at me. Yeah? Yes, chef. You Yes, chef. So I might be a bit biased on this, but I think Burn is one of my most favorite movies because the way the director made the movie and he wanted it to be as real as possible for a real kitchen. So I have no qualms or questions on this clip. It's as real as it gets. The way he screams at his team, the way he asks them to do it properly, the way he makes sure that everything is perfect. I think that is the manifestation of every chef in the world. <laughs> yes, it does. It also depends on your chef. If he's a hot-headed chef and you want to take the knowledge, you got to take the personality that goes along with it. If you can't take his personality, then you're better off getting knowledge elsewhere. Yes, I have many times, but I always try my best to adapt to the situation because I always think knowledge is well more worth it than a scolding. And I feel that everybody should go through a schooling at least once in their life. It just makes you a better man. It's not trying to bring you down. It's not trying to say negative things to you. He just wants to make you a better chef. So guys, thanks for watching me break down this awesome cooking movie scene. So as you can see, being a chef isn't as glamour as it is on the movies. It's more to it than meets the eye, you know. It's not just about whether you can shout at your staff or you can just scold people, you know. It's, it's more of how dedicated are you to ensure that there's good quality food going out. How dedicated are you as a chef to go and find proper ingredients. How dedicated are you to practice your craft and to teach others. Because being a chef is not about working alone. You always have to work in a team. It's always about a team when you work as a chef. So for me, most importantly, can you teach others or not? And can you guide others or not?
you cannot do that, then I would say you better off opening your own kiosk and cooking soon. So thank you guys for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Munch. Thanks! Hey guys, if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more tantalizing videos you can munch on.